This is the beginning of Lyndon's campaign for the Senate in the spring of 1941. He's arriving in Austin, stepping briskly. Herbert Henderson on the left, he was our brain trustee then, Ray Roberts on the right, and that's Charlie Marsh, editor of the paper. Here's Herbert Henderson. And that's Harold Young following him. Either then or later, he worked for Vice President Wallace. a campaign billboard uh, that was present all over the state of Texas. You remember the famous picture it came from where he was shaking hands with Roosevelt in the middle with Jimmy Allred and Allred was taken out. Now here he is shaking hands with Carol Keach. He's about to begin campaigning by car all over the state with Carol Keach to drive him and Herbert Henderson to go along and help him write speeches. He is leaving Temple, Texas, where he was in the hospital at Scott and White Clinic. Uh, at the very beginning of the campaign. A huddle, John Connolly on the left, now governor, Herbert Henderson, a very much slimmer Lyndon. This is a rally in Austin. We are being met uh, at the airport by a group of friends, and this is the bus that went all over the state. A caravan of airplanes off in a company, and, and those posters, ah, now here's one of our opponents, uh, Martin Dyes. This is on the courthouse square of some little East Texas town. Nacogdoches, I believe. In a moment, we'll see. Look in a moment, and you'll see how difficult it is to campaign uh, across about 30 feet of concrete when you're trying to really look into the eyes of your audience. He probably was mad at his, at his advanced man. <laughs> Nacogdoches, that's right. You see, your audience in those days uh, wasn't too numerous, and he's giving them all the old glad to see you, partner. Congressman Martin Dyes was in at the height of his fame as head of the Un-American Activities Committee. His name was known throughout Texas. Look at the faces of the Texas voters as they file past. Now here is another opponent, a uh, man, uh, the young attorney general, called the Little Red Arrow uh, because he had been uh, a famous football player. Uh, you will notice the same gesture repeated. He is on uh, the steps of the courthouse at Marshall, my hometown. hometown. Once more, uh, take a look at the electorate uh, as they listen with varying degrees of interest. I'm happy to say he's since become one of our strongest friends and supporters. And here is another opponent, W. Lee O'Daniel, who flashed like a comet across the Texas political scene. And this, this is on the courthouse square at Marshall also. Uh, uh, you see, there's his, uh, uh, his uh, daughter will appear in a moment, taking up a collection uh, in a little barrel. And uh, these are the, the voters assembled to hear uh, their hero. Like an old Confederate veteran. In those days, there was always one in every political crowd. And this is his band. Uh, a famous uh, word about him was used to, when he'd come to a uh, question that he didn't know quite how to uh, get into, he'd say, strike up a piece. And here comes, strike up a piece, Leon. And here's uh, W. Leo Daniel himself. Pappy O'Daniel, pass the biscuit, Pappy. And that is uh, the Confederate uh, monument there. There was always one in every courthouse square.
That is his daughter, who later went to Hollywood and is married several times. Molly was her name, very pretty girl. She's taking up the contributions. There's the old veteran saying hello. A solitary listener. Now, there is my little niece, uh, Diana Taylor. She is going around distributing leaflets for Johnson. How darling. <laughs> uh, you'll notice once more uh, the picture that we use so much with Jimmy Allred blacked out in the middle, bless him. He wouldn't mind. He was our greatest helper. Now, uh, here's a little plane that Lyndon flew all over Texas in. He had just been on a trip to the valley, as I recall, and uh, he is landing at Marshall, not much of an airport, as you'll observe. And he's being met by Cameron McElroy on the left, and here he is uh, with his band. Uh, we called her the Kate Smith of the South. Uh, this is also on the courthouse square at Marshall. It's just about sundown. That's why the light is so poor. That is Harfield Whedon, the MC of the show on the right. There's the courthouse square at sunset. And here's another one. We had 28 opponents in that race. This is one of the lesser ones, John C. Williams. Too bad there wasn't enough light left because I'd be sure to pick out a lot of friends in the crowd. Look at the careful expression on the face of the voters. Now here, on the courthouse steps at Denison, in the Speaker's District, look at the mustaches. Mustaches and overalls and blue shirts and sweaty faces. It was a hot day. That is Mrs. Riding, Hope Riding's Miller's mother. Of Bonham. Of Bonham. There's a sound truck that went with us, or preceded us, rather, all over the state. Sometimes there would be more than 20 speeches a day. It was a grueling pace. And here he is shaking hands with all the voters. There's a man telling him just how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And here are the state headquarters in the Stephen F. Austin Hotel in Austin. Uh, Rose Groves, Jean Lasseter. And here is a stenographic pool. Very capably run. And, and there's Betty Long, Mrs. Bob Long, one of my. And there's John Conley. And Jake Pickle, now Congressman, and Nellie Conley, now the First Lady of Texas. Mary Rather, our Secretary for Ages. Doug Singleton of Houston. John, weary at the end of a day's work. Herbert Henderson's younger brother, Charles. Mrs. Johnson, in the bed, in a moment you'll see her voting. Uh, and a bunch of the girls waiting to receive us in Temple. Mrs. Johnson is in the hospital at Temple. Um, Harold Young. And here is Lyndon, being met by a group of young s supporters. Buck Hood, <laughs> Carol Keach, who drove us all over Texas, editor of a small town newspaper now, son-in-law of Sam Ford, and there I am. That hat and suit went all over Texas. <laughs> A night rally. Some of the gestures have persisted through the years. 
Weight was not his problem then. Sometimes he'd sweat down three or four suits a day. Harfield Whedon over on the right, the MC. All I did in those days was wait and look. This is in competition with a carnival. Never try to do it. <laughs> I believe that this rally was in Dallas. There's Herbert. I think that, see how weary he is? Uh, Alice Hopkins was in the, uh, Wellie Hopkins on the left. Uh, the wife of the editor, Mrs. Baldwin, on the right. There's Mrs. Johnson, just out of the hospital at Scott and White. A little girl presenting roses. And at Lyndon's two sisters, Lucia on the left, Josepha on the right, and there's Mrs. Arthur Scott. Mayor Tom Miller, there never was but one mayor like Tom Miller on the left. And now that's a long line of cars. Malcolm Bardwell of San Antonio. Uh, here we all are on the stage, Mrs. Johnson, his two sisters, and I for a big rally in, I believe, San Antonio. There was not much air conditioning in those days. And you'll notice that styles are different, too. Ellie Jones in the back. My old familiar hat and suit. Ed Cape of San Marcos, great lawyer, great friend. Dottie Muckleroy, with whom Lyndon had a date the first night we met. Ellie Jones on the right. There's Mr. Ed Cape uh, at his summer retreat where we've had so many happy times. Jean Boringer Lassiter, who introduced me to Lyndon. My brother. T.J. Taylor of Jefferson. He was our county manager in Marion County in deep east Texas in every election that we were ever in. His wife, Sarah. His business, the Jefferson Wholesale Grocery. And some of his clerks and his wife. Girl, the second on the left, is now Mrs. Curtis Barnes, who's with the Foreign Service and stationed all over the world. One of the few Negro voters in Marion County. He voted in every election. And there's Dottie Muckaroy Johnson going in. An old Texas newspaper man. Mayor Reese Lockett of Brenham, Roy Hopkins of Houston, the best campaigner that ever was. Here's Roy. He was our manager in Houston. Put in just about as many hours and as much vitality as Lyndon did. There is a very weary candidate at the end of some long hours. Back with our entertainers once more. Harfield Whedon always managed somehow that to be immaculate. Good showmanship, too. Notice the flag. Aunt Jessie, I believe. Now, here we are in Blanco. Uh, it is election day, and Lyndon has uh, stopped 
in Blanco to see some of the hometown folks. Here we are walking up to the courthouse in Johnson City. That was the sheriff, Cass Paris. Here we are voting in the old county courthouse in Johnson City. Notice the big X. <laughs> There's Lyndon with his mother. And here am I, at least I had a different blouse. <laughs> There's the sheriff, Mr. Cass Paris. He's telling him how, how it ought to have been done. Lyndon and his mother on the front porch of the house where he spent his growing up years. His cousin, Tom Martin, master of ceremonies. There's Uncle Tom Johnson. Tom Martin's waving his arms. There's the assembled citizenry of Johnson City welcoming their hometown boy. The last day of the campaign, Colonel E.O. Thompson. And there on the platform with us is Dr. C.E. Evans, president of Southwest Texas State Teachers College, gave Lyndon his first job. Nobody got more enthusiastic about that campaign than he did. That's the porch. Uh, Tom Martin on his left is the porch of the house. And there is Mrs. Johnson making a speech, and a very wonderful speech it was. I can remember it still. Porch of the boyhood home in Johnson City. The porch of the boyhood home in Johnson City. Well, Lyndon there from about 1913 till, until we married. Except when he was off at college on a job. There's Dr. Evans. How happy he was. Uh, there's Aunt Frank, Mrs. Martin, from whom we later bought the ranch house where we now live. Uh, Mrs. Glidden, the postmistress. One of the old trail drivers. <laughs> there was always an old trail driver at every one of our speeches in those days. There are no more left. And here is the barber shop in Johnson City. Once Lyndon, aged about eight or ten, had a shoe shining job in just such a barber shop. I think it was across the street then, and most of his customers were returned servicemen from the First World War. He put an ad in the Johnson City Record Courier, best shine in town, but his daddy didn't like it at all. And there's Lennon in front of Casparis Cafe greeting some of the old timers, and there's Corky Cox, his little cousin. And look at the headline, this is the night of the election, Johnson leads in state, and there's Lyndon with Carol Keach watching the returns, and Lyndon's mother and his sister Rebecca on the left, his sister Lucia, there's Lyndon and there's me. We're watching what's happening. Bill Deason on the right. Mr. and Mrs. E.H. Perry, uh, two of the few aristocrats who are with us, some wealthy people. Uh, Ray Lee, newspaper editor. Uh, Vola Mae Odom, Miss Jamie Odom. Uh, we lived in the hotel for about three days. It was a long count. On Saturday night, we were so much ahead that the, there's John on the left. There's Senator Wirtz on the right. But the newspapers announced us elected. Uh, the Texas Election Bureau, which is the Dallas News, uh, uh, gave out our election. We received over 3,000 congratulatory telegrams. We worked toward hiring a staff. There's Mr. Sam Foy, editor of the small town newspaper in Floresville. There's Mrs. A.J. Wirtz. There we are on the back porch of the senator's home. But to get back to the story, the lead narrowed. Some counties in deep east Texas and Martin Dyes district began to come in on Monday with substantial differences. Here, I think we must be getting the news and it's getting worse. Now, I think it's still getting worse. It's narrowing on Monday and Tuesday. And on Wednesday, O'Daniel pulled ahead with about 1,300 and something. There's Mary Rather, one smile. Mm -hmm. That's Gordon Fulcher, editor of the paper. Awesome. For about three days that we lived in the hotel at some Mrs. Buck Hood, uh, excellent feature story writer. We all putting on a, a, a brave front there. The last sequence of this film is Lost. It was just about my favorite. Lost somewhere in the last 20 years and 20 or more moves. It was Lyndon in a rumpled seersucker suit, but a very jaunty smile and a, and a jaunty walk, going out to catch a plane to return to Washington in July of 1941. About a month later, he cast a vote in the House of Representatives to keep the draft at the urgence of Speaker Sam Rayburn. The vote 
one by a margin of one. So it was all right that we lost. Sometime you are in the right place at the right time. And sometimes it seasons you and strengthens you and gives you an opportunity to learn. But I'll always remember the campaign of 1941 is just about my favorite campaign.